Slava, from your perception, uh, if you're talking about the revolution of dignity, what was the, the major thing for you and for Ukraine? I mean, after these two years? I'm not... Like major results? You know, I'm not a, a fam famous or infamous French king, Ludovic XIV, who said, France, it's I. So I, I don't know, like, f what's for Ukraine, because I can speak only of myself. I'm not the whole Ukraine. So for me, actually, it didn't change me. I, I don't think that that somehow changed me uh, inside. The one thing that have, has been changed is my attitude to, to death. Because before my done, I thought of death of, as of something very remote and very unreal. So suddenly I've been to some funerals, I saw people dying, but I mean death on the street of your native city, or death on the street of in your country, in your country, in, your, in, in the towns and villages like far in the east, uh, didn't seem that, that much unreal. It, se it seemed like very natural, you remember all these things. So the perception of death, that's probably, that really has dramatically, has been dramatically changed. And uh, regarding, like you know, many people ask me about changes, like how do I see the country, is it different or not? I actually didn't feel any significant change in my mindset uh, regarding Ukraine. I think that uh, I never had any admirations or or awe according to which people like you know many people say that they you know they were, they were driven with this awe and admiration before like Maidan or Revolution of Dignity events. I was very very cautious and it's a very conscious and very, uh, I would say, I knew what was going on. So nothing really surprised me. No, after, immediately after the events, uh, no, and neither immediately after events, no, no. Listen, you and me are now speaking English first. Can you imagine the same situation two years ago? I could imagine, actually, I didn't have any possibilities to speak to you English. I, there are so many people in Kiev to whom I speak English, so... And he used to speak English for many years, for many times. One of my best friends, he's a native English speaker, he had, uh, got me acquainted with many, you know, English experts. So, English language um, actually occupies a, a good piece of my life. Probably not the majority, not like, like, like here being Amer in America, I speak English 95, 99% of my time, but probably Ukraine it's like 10% of my time or 15, but it's not like just once in, in, in three or four years like some other people do. So I speak English almost every day or every day, so nothing special. But this is the change which has happened with you and with the country because we started to move. Anyway, we started to move. If I would ask you to describe where are we moving to, where are we after these two years, what we achieved, what you achieved? Probably my answer will annoy you a little bit because I always start to, to make these expand answers. So, you know, you need to define what you mean by, by the word movement because, like, you know, Arist Arist Aristotle, he always uh, things that everything is moving all the time. So from his point of view, actually nothing happened, had happened uh, special. And I mean, that was all movement. So I, by, by ha having said that, I mean that Ukraine just need to, you know, you know, to pass through different points of its history. And that was one of these points. So we were just, just moving. Uh, do we want that or not? We were moving into some direction. The history and you know course of course of events know better than us where we need to move. But 
So I don't think that we, not, we were not moving before and we started to move after, no. We were moving before, uh, during the events, after the events, we, all the time we are moving. The thing is that I think that uh, we, we do not deeply analyze the things that are going on and that take place with us, around us, behind us, in front of us. We just keep, keep them and get them as granted. And uh, we need to be like, you know, more, we need to think, think these things out. We need to understand why, what are consequences, what are causes, why that happens after that, what, how, can we, can we, how can things be avoided, and all these things. So I, 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 just, I just think that Ukrainian revolution of dignity is still unknown as the course of event or as a condition to the majority of Ukrainians, unfortunately, but I need to admit it. Why, in your opinion, uh, the revolution of dignity didn't become the revolution of victory? Revolutions never become a victory. Revolution has, is always as a coin, you know, it's double-sided. It always has good and bad impact. The best revolutions in the world have like, a harmful impact. The worst revolutions in the world have some good impact. So uh, it's too early to make real conclusions about Ukrainian revolution of dignity. What makes me feel optimistic, I would say, or we wouldn't use the expression happy, but probably I would say even happy, is the fact that Ukrainian people, probably first time in their history, not only like in their independent history or many of these people who are staying, standing on Maidan uh, have consciously and uh, deliberately chosen uh, a value of freedom uh, in favor of value of security and safety. And that's for me is the first symptom of, or like no, a good symptom of moving or so that we're moving in the right direction what 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 i what do i mean by right direction i believe that the value of freedom for a society is better virtue than the value of security it makes our life more interesting more You know, filled with you know, some new events, more, more, more full, and more like you know, invigorating. So, so I think we started moving to that direction, probably following yourself, following your expression of movement. So we started drafting, drifting, sorry, slowly to the to the direction of like people free choice which actually is like a definition of western society that's that's what west is about it's about free choice we didn't have it in ukraine and i think i, I still think we are not ready for that 200% really no 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 i think that the big a big part of ukrainian society still doesn't understand that and i don't blame that I never, I never will, because people are people. People all, in all the countries, are weak. I mean, in Ukraine, in America, in Africa, in, they are generally weak creatures, set, especially in front of the God. You know, we are like just, just, just people. Uh, what we call it, okay, yeah, yeah, ordinary, ordinary people. And people do have their, you know, complexes, do have their fears, do have their, you know, material intentions or, you know, you know, hopes, and to demand from the very beginning, beginning that the majority will choose the freedom, like, you know, in favor of uh, safety or security, 
it will be very naive. It would be very naive, and I I don't think that people are to blame. I just think that it takes time. But for me, uh, if I will understand, if I see that the value of freedom is absolutely unnecessary in that society, I already. I, I kept telling you all the time, and I will tell you once again, I, I won't live in, in such a society. I, I, I think it will be impossible for me. I won't be able to, to, to be within this society. I'll just leave it.